Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode. It's Mel here from Raw Nourishment where I empower, nurture and inspire you to thrive on whole foods, vegan lifestyle. Today it is Q&A time. We got three amazing questions. Let's get cracking. So today's question, first question is from Rosaline Carter. She says, my question is, should I be worried about high sugar content in homemade smoothies? In the UK, there's a lot of news about sugar and smoothies are always being mentioned as being high in sugar. Is it okay it's natural sugar rather than added sugar? All right, firstly, let's address the fructose issue. There's fructose both in whole plant foods such as berries um, and there's also fructose in refined sugars. So obviously we need to go for something that it's in its most natural form, a whole food, because whole foods contain fiber, antioxidants, phytonutrients, and they give us a jam-packed powerhouse to help us basically lose weight, um, prevent and reverse illness and disease, and they keep us thriving at optimal health. Only industrial, not fruit fructose intake, was associated with declining liver function. Same thing with high blood pressure. Fructose from added sugars was associated with hypertension, but fructose from natural fruits is not. Now, when we are looking at the powerhouse of fruits, berries is number one because of its color pigment. The color pigment <clears throat> is basically like the antioxidants factor, and it's going to help you um, prevent and reverse disease. It's going to help you thriving at optimal health, and it is truly best for your body, and it is what your body is designed on. If we look at the powerhouse of vegetables, then we're looking at greens because of the color and the phytonutrients. So you really need to be looking at consuming more color into your diet and the media is trying to brainwash you um, to believe that oh this is too too much sugar and fruits and blah 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 you know do your research educate yourself so you can basically arm yourself with the knowledge to prevent yourself and other people that you know from falling into the trap of being brainwashed from society and you basically need to become your own doctor. You need to question everything. So we need to go through green light foods. It's basically explained the traffic light system in, I think it's in episode two of How Not To Die series. Green light foods are unprocessed foods. Yellow light foods are foods that have been processed, but they don't add anything bad and they don't take away anything good. And then red light foods are basically there's no vitamins, minerals, there's no nutrients, there's no fiber, there's nothing left that's good for your body. Anyway, I hope that answers your question. So basically, oh, in regards to sugar, if you need to add sugar into your foods, the best one to add would be date sugar because it's a whole plant food. You literally take dates, you put them in the oven and they um, become a little bit hard. You put them in the blender and they basically like crystallize when they're in the oven, blend them up and then you've got sugar. And that's something that I need to do because I mentioned, I think it was in episode four of How Not to Die. Um, I really, I, I was trying to have blackstrap molasses, which is a green light food according to Dr. Gregor, but tastes terrible. So date sugar is the way if you need to add sugar, but because it's a whole plant food and it has fiber, if you're putting it in your tea, it's going to make it thicker in consistency. But if you don't really care, then whatever. But yeah, just do the very best with, with what you've got and with the knowledge and understanding that you have at the time. Educate yourself, download um, Dr. Greg's book on your iPad or buy it, whatever works truly best for you, knowledge is power. All right, let's go on to the next question. Da, 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 da. Powered by flowers, what a beautiful name. What is your opinion on eating fruit after a meal? I always thought this was fine, but recently have seen people say that it should be eaten before. You are my inspiration, thank you. Oh my gosh, let's just check her out. Jen! Oh, she's cute. Oh, her dog is so cute. Oh my God. Oh, look at this, Jen. Amazing. Good job. I love going through your Instagrams. Oh, she's read the book, How Not to Die from Dr. Gregor. Can you guys see that? Amazing. Where are you from, Jen? You've got Mickey Mouse ears on. I used to work for Disney. Oh my goodness. En route to Disneyland. I'm saying either, oh. So you're in Europe, Disneyland, Paris. Okay, let's go back to the question. Oh, uh, what did she say again? What is your opinion on eating fruits after a meal? Okay, so first of all, we need to look at fruit in terms of how quickly it digests. 
it digests a lot quicker. It's like within seconds, it starts to go through your digestional tract and then um, into your bloodstream. So it, it does it within a matter of seconds or minutes. I can't remember. Um, I'll show you an excerpt on the screen right now from the 801010 diet by Dr. Doug Douglas Graham. Um, and he speaks a lot about that. He breaks it down into three different stages, but I'll just show you on the screen right now because I can't remember. There's three stages. Anyway, so it happens very, very quickly. So obviously it digests quickly. So if you're eating fruit after a meal, it's going to ferment in your stomach because it's taking a lot longer for your body to digest what you've eaten first. Um, it's like a process of elimination. So if you eat this first, that's going to digest faster than what you're having last. Okay. But what I've noticed on my journey is that sometimes I do eat fruit after um, whatever my main meal is. But sometimes I, well, actually, I don't really have issues with that. So if it's working best for you and you notice, notice no discomfort within your body, then, then that's fine, you know? Yes, fruit does digest um, a lot quicker and it does ferment in your belly if you're eating other things before. But if it's if you don't have issues with your, um, your uh, what do you call it, like digestive issues, like your belly doesn't bloat after you eat something or whatever, then do what works best for you. Just because somebody says, did you know, blah, blah, blah. Check out the source in which that information is coming from educate yourself so you can make better choices. But if it personally, you're noticing that there's no issues with um, your digestion, then that is fine. Um, I don't have issues with that. So, but not that I really eat fruit after a meal. Not rarely do I do it, but just do what works best for you. Okay. Next question is, from Amber Adolf, and she says, has it been shown that raw vegan diets help with autoimmune diseases? Yes, it absolutely does. Different autoimmune diseases tend to target different organs. If our immune system attacks the insulin-producing cells in our pancreas, we can end up with type 1 diabetes. If our immune system attacks our thyroid gland, we can end up with hypothyroidism. But in the autoimmune disease lupus, our immune system attacks the very nucleus of our cells, often producing antibodies and attacking our DNA itself, so it can damage any organ system and result in almost any complication. Oral supplementation of the spice turmeric decreases proteinuria, hematuria, and systolic blood pressure, the cardinal clinical manifestations in patients suffering from relapsing or refractory, meaning untreatable, lupus kidney inflammation. Note they said turmeric, the whole spice, not curcumin, which is an extracted component often given in pill form. They took women with out-of-control lupus and just had them take like a quarter teaspoon of turmeric with each meal for three months. In my local supermarket, that would come out to be about a nickel a dose, compared to mm, $35,000 a year for one of the latest lupus drugs. Which of the two treatments do you imagine doctors are more likely to be told about? Because I haven't ever had an autoimmune disease, there's only so much information I can share. I can link you to a whole heap of sources, no problem. But I think the best way for you to connect with that information is for me to refer you to two of my wonderful friends who have um, cured their autoimmune diseases. The first one is Elena from Ailing to Able. She's in the process of writing an ebook at the moment, which is all about um, curing her autoimmune disease. She's noticed that from um, fasting and from juice cleanse. I hope I've pronounced it right. It's not a, no. Oh gosh, I can't remember the term that she used. I don't think she likes juice fast because you're technically not fasting if you're consuming juice. Go and see Eleanor, tell her that Mel from Raw Nourishment sent you, and she will be able to uh, aim you with all of the incredible information. She has an Instagram and she has a YouTube. And also another person to check out is Tani Raw. Oh my gosh, she's absolutely amazing. She thrives on eating um, raw foods. So please check out both of those women, both amazing powerhouse of knowledge. They have basically, they got so sick that that they were basically told that they were not going to survive. So these women are incredible. They are my role models, they are inspiration. And because I have never experienced an autoimmune disease, there's only so much I can help you with. So I would love for you to check out those beautiful channels 
um, Tanny Raw and Ailing to Abel. Anyways, my loves, thank you so much for your wonderful questions. I just wanted to remind you to continue to make better choices on your journey to become your greatest version. I truly appreciate when you take the time to ask me questions because you really make me think and I'm like, oh, how can I help you help these girls out the best way I can? And I'm like doing all this research and trying to get everything right. So I hope this has been helpful. If it has, please give me a thumbs up. That would be amazing. If you're new to the Royal Irishman fam, subscribe videos every Tuesday and Thursday at 6 p.m. We cover a wealth of topics from delicious and nutritious foods. We talk about self-love because love heals all blockages. We talk about fitness, exercise, motivation, and I have a little bit of activism thrown in there. Not per se in like an activism video, it's like thrown in. In particular, when I'm talking about um, makeup and cruelty-free cosmetics, I also share with you my very transparent healing and weight loss journeys. If you are a newbie vegan, I've made a whole playlist called the Newbie Vegan Starter Guide. It's everything that you need to know to um, become vegan. Hopefully this was helpful. I love you so much. Thank you so much for all the love and support. I truly appreciate it. Remember, continue to make better choices and I will see you next episode. Oh, stay tuned for Thursday. It is a massive announcement. Do not miss Thursday's video. It's the biggest video I've ever posted on my two years of YouTube. I love you so much, guys. Stay tuned for Thursday and I will see you next episode. I love you guys. Bye. Have a good day. Remember, continue to make better choices. Oh. Okay, I'm really going. <laughs> Bye.